Hello everyone, welcome to Make2Explore channel. First of all, thank you to all our subscribers, viewers, and supporters. In this session, we are going to see a new project. Face Mask Detection Based Door, or Gate Entry System. This system will open the gate only when person wears the mask properly. If there is no mask, then no entry. We will use Raspberry Pi 4 development board, Python programming, deep learning techniques. We will also use different computer vision libraries like TensorFlow, Keras. So without any delays, let's get started. As we know, whole world is struggling and recovering from ongoing coronavirus pandemic. One of the preventive measures for such viral diseases is to use of face masks or coverings has been recommended in public settings to minimize the risk of transmissions. Also, one should wear mask properly. But we often see there are no efficient face mask detection applications, which are now in high demand for transportation means in densely populated areas, crowdy public places, and other enterprises to ensure safety. So, you may have seen, no mask, no entry boards, with setup of, face mask and COVID-19 safety checking booths. In several public places, like, movie theaters, shopping malls, train, subway stations, holy places, hotels, gyms, etc where security personals are appointed to check face mask of the peoples. They will not allow you through the gates without face mask. So, in such places, what if we place automatic system, with gate access control, fully automatic, without any human intervention? In this project we will try to implement such system using Raspberry Pi. Wondering about how it will work? Let's see the detailed functional block diagram of this project. Here is the block diagram of the project. Raspberry Pi 4 is interfaced with camera, RFID reader, LCD display, buzzer, two-channel relay board, gate locks and servo motor to open and close the gate. All these blocks. Okay, now let's see how it will work. So, there will be a RFID cards, or tags, which we will first registered and given to users. This will be done in initial RFID coding. These are just for some basic level of authentication and to invoke the camera system whenever user comes at gate. Okay, now suppose when any user places RFID card on the reader, if that card is valid, then Raspberry Pi will greet that user by showing some messages on LCD display. Also, it prompts user to wear face mask and look at the camera. Then it also turns on the relay one first lock indicating that valid RFID detected. Then it will give command to turn on the camera to provide live feed of the user's face. Here comes image processing and computer vision part, where we have implemented two phases, training and deployment. As a prerequisite, we need to first train the system to differentiate faces as with mask and without mask. We have used Python and computer vision and deep learning to carry out these procedures. We will discuss this part in more details in coming sessions. Here, Raspberry Pi will apply this face mask detector. Now suppose, if user wears face mask properly, then system detects it and shows its status on LCD screen. Subsequently, it turns on the Relay 2, second level lock and move the servo motor to open the gate. Okay, now, let's see another case. Here, user will place valid RFID card. Will be then greeted on LCD screen. Same procedure will be followed, as we have seen earlier, then camera will start feeding live video to Raspberry Pi. Here, suppose, if user is not wearing face mask, then face mask detector will identify that, and user will get denied entry, buzzer will starts buzzing, gate will not open until, and unless user wears face mask properly. In this way, this project will work. User cannot get passed through final gate until and unless he or she wears a face mask properly. All right. So, this was all about functional block diagram and theoretical working of the project. 
Now, let's see important stages in face mask detection programming. As we have mentioned earlier, there are two stages in face mask detection, training and deployment. In training part, here we will focus on loading our face mask detection dataset from disk. This dataset will consist of different images of people's wearing a face mask, also, images of people's wearing face mask improperly, and with no mask at all. After that, we will training a model using Keras or TensorFlow on this dataset. Then, we will go to serializing the face mask detector to disk. As a prerequisite, we need to first train the system to differentiate faces as with mask and without mask. And then after training, here comes the deployment part. Once the face mask detector is trained. In detection part, we can then move on to loading the mask detector. System will invoke the camera and try to detect faces in live video stream. Then next, we will extract the ROI, means region of interest from each face's frame. Then, the face mask classifier will get applied to the region of interests of each face to determine is user is wearing a face mask or there is no face mask. Once the classification step is completed, then results will be shown on the screen with bounding box around the face. And finally, program will be forwarded to gate control system, where microcontroller will command the motors to either close or open the gates. So, this was all about training and deployment stages and their steps to be performed. These steps are important for understanding the program flow. Okay, let's move forward and see the frameworks which we have used for this project. We will use Python coding for this project with OpenCV, optimized computer vision programming library. We will also use CAFE-based face detector to detect faces in frame then to extract respective ROI. CAFE is a fast, modular, optimized deep learning framework. Then we will also use Keras library. Keras is an open source software library that provides a Python interface for artificial neural networks. Keras acts as an interface for the TensorFlow library. And we know the TensorFlow, which is core open source library, which helps to develop and train AI and machine learning models. MobileNet V2 is a convolutional neural network architecture. It is computationally efficient. So, it makes easier to deploy the models to embedded system devices like Raspberry Pi, Google Coral, etc. We have also programmed this project in C++. It requires installation of code blocks IDE in Raspberry Pi. Also, we need to install OpenCV from its source by building and making, etc. It is very comprehensive and time-taking process. We will share the CPP code also if anyone wants to program this project in C++. Here we have used TensorFlow's light version with retrained MobileNet version 2 SSD model. It recognizes three classes as with no mask, with mask, and wearing a mask incorrectly. Okay, all right. Now, let's move to the hardware section of this project and see schematic or circuit diagram of the project. Here is the one. Let me give you brief description of all the connections here. So, you can see all wiring connections are in color coding. Hence, you can easily track them. You will get this schematic on our GitHub page. Let's see about the hardware components included. Here is the Raspberry Pi 4, Model B, to which this Logitech C270 webcam is connected. This is 16x2 LCD. To reduce the pin requirements, we have used this I2C-based serial adapter module to connect this display. It uses the PCF8574TIC chip, which converts I2C serial data to parallel data for the LCD. It requires only four pins to control this display using this I2C module. LCD is powered with 5 volts from this MB102 breadboard power converter module. This module converts 9 volt battery or USB power supply to two power rails, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. You can see here. This is logic level converter module. 
that is required since Raspberry Pi pins works with 3.3 volts logic level. And this I2C module and this RFID reader module works with 5 volts logic level. So, we cannot connect 5 volts directly to Raspberry Pi's any input pin. Hence, to avoid any pin damages, it is recommended to use this bi-directional level shifter device, which takes care of logic levels. This is two-channel relay board. We will utilize both channels. Here is loads, you can connect solenoid locks or motors. The next, here is the piezo buzzer module. And this is SG90 servo motor. PWM controlled servo motor. Here, this is EM18 RFID reader module, which is used to read RFID tags of frequency 125 kHz. This is higher resolution image, you can download it from our GitHub. Even you can zoom it to further, like this, to get clearer view of each connections. Please note that, if you want to replicate this project on your desk, then you have to set up following things as a prerequisite. 1. Install OpenCV and other required libraries like Keras, NumPy, Matplotlib, etc. Also, as we have already mentioned earlier, if you are planning to code in C++, then you need to install Codeblocks IDE and OpenCV from its source rather than Python package. After that, you need to enable and set up the serial port where RFID reader module is going to be connected. So you can read the RFID codes through UART. For that, we recommend to use PL011 UART instead of mini UART. The PL011 UART controller is not linked to the VPU core frequency. This means that the baud rate stays the same regardless of VPU speed. The PL011 UART controller also includes other features not present in the mini UART controller such as framing error detection, break detection, receive timeout interrupts and parity bit support. So you need to swap the UART. By default, the mini UART is mapped to the TXD pin, GPIO14, and RXD pin, GPIO15, on the 40 pin GPIO header. PL011 UART is used for the Bluetooth or wireless module. But either module can be mapped to the GPIO port. To use PL011 UART, you need to disable the Bluetooth. You can do this using Raspi config setup mode. Or from command line. We have explained all these above procedure in our detailed tutorial video. Where we have also explained how to interface EM18 RFID reader with Raspberry Pi. Please check out that video. Link is given the in description, as well as an i button given above. Okay, then next, for servo motor, to avoid jittering effect. Use Pi GPIO library. This library utilizes hardware-based timing and sampling, rather than software, which is used in wiring Pi library. It features hardware-timed PWM and servo pulses on all of GPIO 0 to 31. This is all about software and hardware setup of this project. Now, let's see actual implementation and demo.
Invincible. 